Welcome to the show, Richard Norris. You are an award-winning musician, songwriter and composer, crossing the boundaries of acoustics and electronics. Your music has been performed at the BBC, ITV, Channel 4 and 5, South Bank Centre and Royal Albert Hall, winning the Royal Television Society's Best Promotional Video in 2017. You enjoy collaborating with artists and musicians and have a long-term partnership with the Modulus String Quartet. You're also involved with the choir with no name, those affected by homelessness. Thank you so much for joining us. There's loads to talk about with you, Richard. Please do tell us more. So, yeah, I've been interested in music from the word go. And initially I started uh, learning bass guitar and guitar and clarinet and all that. And over the years, I initially started doing a lot of performing. And then as it progressed, became much more interested in writing, mm. but still a love for performing and still getting out and performing. And it's gone through two sorts of phases, really, in that I, I moved to London and started to play in um, still bass guitar, but started to play with more uh, soul sort of big bands sort of styles. But then I got into electronics, and I know this is a, a sort of can be a controversial area in terms of live performance. I'm really interested in synthesizers and that side of things, and I feel that I have two sorts of sides to what I do and what I go out and do. And the, and the difficult thing, the challenge is trying to find a way to make them both work together in a yeah. way that keeps it organic. I think. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really interested in producing music using synthesizers and electronics entirely, but often collaborating with videographers or playwrights. I'll tell you a little bit more about my the, my most recent projects shortly. And then there's also the other side, and I've just started playing in a, a lot more folk music, actually. So I've been playing with a, a folk trio, and that's entirely the other side, where you end up playing in a room just with three guitars and then bandonians, uh, yeah, mandolins, all that. And yeah. that was a huge shock to the system, actually, having gone from used, used to playing more electronic music to standing in a room. And, and the, after the first gig, I said to them, <laughs> Yeah. The scariest side, the scariest thing here is that the whole room is silent. Yeah. You can get away with a, a fair amount when you're doing when it when it's loud and uh, the audience are sort of having a nice time, maybe chatting a little bit, but in a completely silent room. And I, I, I enjoyed it actually, but it was yeah. just it's two very different approaches to music. And because I enjoy both sides, I'm really interested in looking at how to combine the two and to make the electronic music more organic the latest project i'm doing which is relevant to this i started writing a project called sensoria and it's basically a 40 minute piece initially inspired by asmr which is the autosensory meridian response basically when particular sounds or particular feelings when they really do something to someone and they relax them and they make them feel in a particular way so I was speaking to someone about this and I thought that it would be really interesting to write a piece in which the audience could potentially maybe submit particular sounds that they that, 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 that mean something to them before the performance. So even though the piece is written, when the audience turn up, there will be something specific to that particular oh. audience in each piece. It's in three sections and it starts, this is sort of bordering onto synesthesia in terms of when colours, <laughs> specific colours mean things. Yeah. So it's, it comes from lots of different places. I've taken three colours, which are white, blue and red. And I wrote the music entirely based on the colours. I had a room with some lighting. It was actually quite interesting to write how you write differently when you've got bright white bright, bright light and uh, then a nice soothing blue and then a more rich red. So I wrote that over maybe about six months. Mm. And then I started to work with a videographer who you've actually had on recently, uh, Diego, a good man. So then we sort of tried to work out how we could make that uh, move visually alongside the music. Mm. Uh, so that's the sort of uh, where I've come from, and it's been fairly intense. That's what I've been working on the last probably year and a half. But the reason I was talking about that, not just to talk about that, is that I went and performed it last year in an amazing venue in Coventry uh, called the LTB Showrooms, and it's basically a disused car warehouse or car mm -hmm. showroom. They've changed it into a performance venue. And what I found when I was performing it was how to engage with the audience when you're stood behind a keyboard with lots of playback. Mm. And it is actually a challenge because I was so involved. I thought, oh, I've written this. I'm, I know what I'm doing and stuff. But when I actually started doing it, I thought, why am I actually stood here? What's what's like the human edge to it? Yeah. And, it's, and it's quite difficult. When you start to feel like that, then I just felt a bit self-conscious. So the challenge with this project, and this is what I was thinking for Music for Global Change, which obviously involves getting humans involved and is yeah. obviously a, a human response thing. You don't want to be performing music and feeling that you're just basically what, having a bunch of people watching a video and right. then you just 
there like a lemon. So I've been so I've been trying to work on how to make it a much more interactive experience. It's not that there weren't musicians involved with it because there was loads of musicians involved with it, and I worked with the modulus quartet that you had mentioned mm. and Diego. But uh, it's then a case of how do you take something like that and put it in a performance space that the audience can feel engaged with. Well, the first natural thing is to get more musicians involved, live musicians. So obviously budget depending. You mean humans? Human beings, Human yeah. interaction, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Human beings. Well, I've never heard of such a thing, man. But, <laughs> I, you know, I come from, well, there were no computers back then. Yeah. So well, the bass player, computers. if the bass player didn't show up, you didn't have bass, right? Man has outdone himself with technology. He thinks he's an orchestra, you know what mm. I mean? And but but yeah. you'll still ne never get that human sound, you know. And and if the kids don't get a chance to hear the difference, right? Completely. I mean, I, you know, the internet's only been here since 1996. That's not a long time, but just think about them kids after 1996. They only think everything you you have to plug it in first, right? Yeah. They, they don't yeah. know that music came from human beings first. That I mean, I did an experiment with five bands and I had them play the same song, right? And yeah. you can still, no matter, you're still playing the same notes, where they're supposed to be at and all that, but every human being has his own sound. Yeah, And even yeah. though they played that same song, it still sounds different because everybody has their own, you know what I'm saying? Oh, completely, completely. Yeah. And that's so important. When that just made me think of um, something I did a few years ago, and it, it was with a choir, and I, and I love working with choirs because yeah. it's basically so many people singing together as one. Uh, and I do a lot of work with choirs now, and I just love it. Just the whole thing, just for well-being, it's just mm. amazing. But um, but they actually hooked the whole choir up to a heart rate monitor, and they had it visually wow. on the screen showing the uh, the heart rates, and they, they they'd all learned to piece. It was about 50, 60 people, if not more. Oh, and wow. over the course of two, three minutes, the uh, the heart rates did start to align, not right. 100, percent but but it was interesting to see how different they were at first, and then they just yeah. broke gradually. And it's true, and it's just that, and that is something that I agree. Just in a room of just musicians and people who are feeling the same pulse and feeling the same energy that's you sort of need that well, I, I do it i do it for this because i that's what happened to me as a kid because we didn't have computers right but yeah. if you take some young people now and go put them in the room with some, he, some amazing talented human beings that's probably been practicing all day so they can play tonight and they come in there with a different i mean i want the kids to go wow look at that instrument Instead of you going, oh, I got that in my computer. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Uh, That's wrong. Also, the, also, what you're saying as well, if you take five bands and they all sound slightly differently, if, if you take the same band and play the same song five times, you're going to play it a bit differently every time as well. And that's a really nice thing. Like when I'm playing bass, you might lean into something slightly differently one time and not another time, or the drummer might push you. And it is that human interaction that sort of yeah, pushes you. Per. And you can't get that feeling, man, on a on a keyboard you playing the bass playing on a keyboard but when you playing on bass yeah yeah it's more open right and and yeah. it, the sound of the string and all of that kind of stuff i tell kids all the time you know yeah that sounds good on your computer but if i if i bring that saxophone player in here because that just that area from the the, the microphone and the bell there's you know it's a little different I agree. And that's the lovely thing about live performance as well, isn't it? Because a recording is great to listen to, but I've been making a, a lot of effort recently to get out and go and actually watch gigs. Ten, yeah. like, in quite small venues and quite small venues, but uh, I found one particular venue that has music on five, six nights a week. And it's I'll often yeah. just go to see people I've never even heard of, but I'll just know I'm free that evening and book it. And it's just amazing just to hear different people, especially to open your mind. Cause I know we have Spotify and I know we have all these things, but uh, often the the, uh, the gigs are so expensive to go and watch or they're or they're far away or something but just to find local music in your yeah. community and uh i know there's a lot going on around forest road and i know there's a lot going on around bournemouth and i think but where and, and remember and remember you know humans were here before the computer right so <laughs> there was all it's always been music and it, yeah. it looks like 
looks like it's going back that way because you can't make any money off of streaming. So people have to go out and play live again. Yeah. And, what, what, and, and, and that brings in music lovers, right? It's another yeah. feel, man. So the challenge is if you are going to combine technology to try and keep it, give it a human edge. And I think yeah. there are ways to do it, but I'm just not sure it's often done because I think obviously bands just go out and it's easier just to play the same track. And as I say, if a, if a band plays a song twice, they're going to play it slightly differently each time. And the danger is if you use computers that it's just the same every time, the same every time, and it doesn't really sound particularly <laughs> interesting. And you might as well be listening to the recording. So yeah. that's been an interest of mine. That's the thing with computers. You have to program it, your thoughts into a machine. Yeah. But but if you plan, you know, simultaneously by yourself, I mean, you, if you, if with, with the instrument, you, like, like, I always say this, if you want to see how music sounds different, is that, let a guy play some blues tonight. And then tomorrow before he goes on stage, stomp on his foot. That's <laughs> going to sound different. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's very true. I've never tried that. But <laughs> yeah, you can get that with the computer, right? Try that. Yeah. Uh, having said that, really, I've been playing with this folk trio that I'd mentioned uh, called Alcavan, and we um we recorded a live gig that we did recently, and it's it's completely live. It's uh, I'm playing bass at it, uh, and it's it's just bass, uh, percussion, and guitar, and uh, two singers, three when I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but listening back to the recording was interesting because we we it's good to be quite critical when you listen back and you're like I was happy with the performance, but there was things that we said we should go away and work on this, uh, and that's the human edge, isn't it? Like just things like we'd, mm. we'd start rushing, but rushing's okay actually. I think we've been sort of conditioned with computer music as well that rushing is a oh, bad. No, I mean, we're not perfect, you know, yeah. like the. The, the computer you you have to manipulate it to sound like a human yeah you know because you know, there's some air, there's some when you play a drum there's some air and some timing mm. that you can't you know the computer's just gonna be a clock you know what i mean it's it doesn't sound natural but, yeah. but we, and we're getting away from that because i want the kids to see what natural feels like you know what i mean yeah. like you can just go hey stop right here in the middle of the song instead of oh yeah i got let me click this and <laughs> all that yeah. tom I just want to go back slightly to to what you were talking about your ASMR um kind of work with that and and this gig that you said you you were doing where you kind of let the audience uh kind of participate in sense where they they give you sounds and kind of emotions and wow, that's that must have been really quite difficult for you to actually achieve as far as you you had no idea what they were gonna what they were gonna bring to you to the part to the pot as it were was that quite a difficult thing for you to to do it was, and it was, but it was very interesting. Uh, to the, the technical side, I think wasn't actually as difficult as I, I thought it would be, because I would either get people to submit, like if I, if I knew who was coming to the gig, they can uh, submit like the week before, just send right. an email or just whatever, let me know. However, um, and so it was actually interesting. It was some of the things I've had so far, just like the sound of like grass sort of being rubbed. Okay, um, yeah. The obvious ones was like brushing hair. Then there was like a tapping of a glass, um, and one of them was a, a car. That, it was a quite difficult one to actually record, but a car tire as the car was reversing on as it was starting up. So I had to t- somehow get a <laughs> microphone now then to go out and record all these. Wow, yeah, it was good. And then you gradually just build up the sound, like sound banks of it, which which are, is another interesting way of just building sounds. But um. But I think that's an interesting way to make like a yeah. performance so the audience feel a part of the performance. Did, did you have like people in the audience go, oh, that's my bit. I remember, <laughs> I remember <laughs> mentioning I that. After the performance, I spoke to people about that. But yeah. it was fun. It was good fun. And actually, I think uh, it could be expanded upon it. I want, I, I'm going to try and keep expanding upon Great it. Like, uh, when people come in, for example, if people are just have come in off the streets or if they haven't booked, there's no reason why you can't actually make sounds or record sounds. Like, and you can even take it further to taking it away from sounds and have it with people. Uh, this one particular venue we play at, there's a guy who's um, always painting pictures of the live performance. So right. just to have something like that, you could even have that being projected on the screen as it goes. I just think the if you can get things happening in the room at that time, then it yeah. is... A genuine like an interaction so i, I love i love it when you can do that but 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 see i want to do it with live live uh with human beings right yeah and and 
get like 15 musicians and then you get some artists to come. Everybody go do four or five songs and then they go off and here come another act. Right. And it just, it's just different each time. So there's no reason right? why it can't be done live as, as well. Cause you can, you can try and recreate the sounds live. They don't need to be pre-recorded. It, it, it could no, be that's live. what I'm talking about doing it live. Yeah. I want, I want live. You yeah. know, I went to go see Motown when I was like 10 years old. Right. And all those groups, TV wonder came out and the four tops and, but it, but it was the same band. Right. Yeah. They come out and they do four songs and they go off in another band, another, another act. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, it kept the same. That's why it kept moving. Right. Yeah. yeah. For three hours like that. And it's just, it's just, it was brilliant for it. was absolutely amazing. Yeah. 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 Man. And now if you hook that up with some visuals, like on each side of the stage, right. Yeah. Now, but I, I, I really want to do a lot of my songs like that, that visual. I don't, I don't, you don't need to look at me. I'm 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 300 years old. So, but you know, what I mean? so but look, you know, check the check the visuals because, man, I'm gonna send you, you a like, couple. Do you like the idea of them being made as the music's made, or do you, would would you like them made in advance? I think that's cool. I think that I think that could be cool. You know, mm, yeah, spontaneous instant gratification. I think that yeah. could be really cool. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be interesting. Well, it's really interesting seeing what th this guy is just painting on, uh, doing it on paper. But it's just so interesting coming up at the end and just see, just seeing it, um, just seeing what he's done. And, and, and then if he says if you want to develop them further, then he can go away and develop them. But I think the first thing is just getting that seed, the idea, isn't it? Just how you respond. It is. And and you know, I'm like I'm like a literal guy, so I want I want the visuals to be exactly what I was writing ly lyrically, right? Yeah. Instead yeah. of you look at the ocean. I'm talking about something totally different. I, I hate them kind of videos. Yeah. I want you to see. I want, when when I say that word, you see that word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And so I like I like those kind of guys that's really fast like that. You know, Tom, you got another question? Well, I just want to briefly revisit the fact that you won the Royal Television Society Best Promotional Video um, that you got there in 2017. What was what was the video? How did the concept of the video come about? And, and tell us a little bit about what that was and why you won it. Uh, it was for the development. It was a fundraising campaign for the development of a concert hall in Warwick. Uh, and it was to uh, promote uh, not just not just local community, uh, not local community, uh, music and drama, but also national. So they've managed to actually get on uh, on, a, on, a, on the touring circuit. Uh, and I worked with a director and it was basically just speaking to people it was speaking to people around the area but also speaking to companies further afield mm -hmm. not just in london because there was obviously this london century thing but there was yeah. it was around the country so up in newcastle yeah. up down south uh and they managed to secure the funding and so uh yeah. and it, yeah and it was used as a promotional video for that and it went out on uh i think it went out on channel four and then it went out on all the online uh yeah forms of the time so <laughs> yeah yeah it was i enjoy working again it's a collaboration thing whether you're in a room with someone or whether you're in a on a project with a goal at the end of it i think it's yeah. the same sort of concept so yeah uh, I, I, I gotta have some chemistry that's all yeah it's all down to chemistry isn't it and actually all these projects when i when i look back at the more successful things that i've enjoyed it's always been down to the human interaction and the actual people you work with and they tend to be people that you want to work with again as well. So, exactly, exactly. And hey, listen, thank you for taking the time to come on our show, my yeah. brother. Appreciate right, you thank you so much. Thank you so much Appreciate for talking. It. And it's been a yeah, thank keep you. going with the amazing campaign, and the, yeah, it's great. Before you go, Richard, just want to see if you're on any kind of social media uh, outlets or anything, or your website kind of thing. Yeah, I've got a website, uh, www.richardnorrismusic.com. Facebook is uh, Richard Norris Music and X, which is now called, and Instagram yep. as Richard J. Norris. Okay. Uh, okay. Blah, yes. Good stuff. That's been lovely meeting you, and thank you for speaking to me. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks for coming on our show.
Thank you so much for watching. To stay up to date, please click subscribe and hit the bell. You can also join our group on Facebook and find us on LinkedIn and Instagram.